So this video was supposed to feature these two boards from Big Tree Tech, the Mini E3 V1.2 and the V1.4 Turbo being put into this printer, the Ender 5 Plus. And this was the plan for this week. I was going to have one terrific video. I was going to show you how these two boards performed over here. But as you can see from the Batman laying on their faces and all of these other test prints, that didn't exactly go to plan. So what happens when you set up all your test prints and start taking a look at your quality, but right off the bat, you don't get what you're expecting out of Marlin 2.0? Well, back to these guys and these guys, you end up with a lot of test prints. And so in this video, I'm going to talk to you about my experiences with switching to Marlin 2.0 and how picking just the right test prints led me on this path. And that's what I'm doing today right here on Curzy Fabrications. Let's go. So here I am with all of my test prints, and as I mentioned in the intro, what led me on this path was the two boards that I've been telling you forever I was going to do a video on. I've got the Mini E3 version 1.2, and I've got the Turbo 1.4, V1.4, that I was going to show you how to put in here. I was going to do some test prints to compare the two, you know, the sort of thing I do. But... First things first, I had to choose my test print, so let's go over those first. I, of course, chose the Benchy. It is a well-known test print. People know what it's supposed to look like. I know what it's supposed to look like, so that's first. Second of all, I went with something that's going to test the movement of the machine, make sure retractions are working correctly, uh, see how clean this can get based upon which firmware I'm using, so I chose this Hypercube. And lastly, I chose kind of a bigger piece because I wanted something that was going to run a little bit longer and something that would have something that these two didn't have. And so I chose this Batman bus by David Ostman. And the reason I chose this is I love all of the details on the cape. This is a lot of wavy surfaces that are irregular. It also has some terrific smooth surfaces on the top of his chest, on his stomach and his chest. Uh, these are this is a really good test print to just check printing consistency and to see how it handles some rough patches of a lot of direction changes. So I chose the Batman. So this is going to turn out to be really good test prints and it's going to demonstrate why I go out of my way to choose test prints that are going to best represent what I want to test. So from here, I did my first test prints. I have these three here are my originals. I'll show them to you up close, of course. And they pretty much turned out like I would expect from this machine. I'm running the silent board currently, so all of these are on the silent board. This is on my custom firmware that I showed you in my last video, and they are gorgeous. They turned out exactly like I expected. The sidewalls are smooth, the overhangs are nice. Even this, you know, hypercube turned out good overall. There are some rough spots with some pretty steep overhangs on the bottom, but overall looks really good. Not a lot of stringing, if any. And the Batman, again, turned out terrific. I didn't do any cleanups on this. Uh, so you'll notice a little bit of uh, uh, cleanups that are needed on his nose and his chin where I did some supports on him. But overall, terrific print exactly again what I would expect from this printer all these done these were done at 50 millimeters per second and with a 0.2 millimeter layer height but I didn't stop there because a lot of people like to run their machines at higher speeds so I also did the same benchmarks at 100 millimeters per second the 100 millimeters per second Again, kind of what I expected. They don't look as good as the 50 millimeters, but they're not bad prints. They just have some troubled areas. Again, we'll get to those in a minute. So once all of these were done, next up it was time to install the Mini E3 and test that board first. Now, compared to this machine, this is by default running on a Marlin 1.x release, specifically Marlin 1.1.6. Now, 
when we go to a 32-bit board, we can't stick with Marlin 1.x. We have to go to Marlin 2.x. Uh, in this case, the most latest release is 2.0.5.3. So that's what I went with. I installed the board. I then went through Marlin, very carefully selected the correct settings for this machine myself. I went and selected the features I thought that were important to producing good prints myself. And I did a test build and Basically, just as you would expect, I went through the motions of running a few test prints. Now, I started off first, of course, with the Benchy. That's my first test print. Now, I printed the 50 millimeter and the 100 millimeter per second Benchy and immediately saw problems, particularly on the 100 millimeter per second Benchy. I got some zits or bumps or whatever you want to call them on the bow of the ship. And it looks like either that it was pausing or just that it wasn't getting clean extrusions. Upon further inspection, I could kind of see the same thing at the 50 millimeter per second. It's just really hard to see. I think just due to the fact that uh, it wasn't pausing as long, it wasn't having as big of a problem going all that slower. So my initial thought was maybe the E3 just isn't up to the task. Maybe it can't go that fast. Maybe it's just not powerful enough. It wasn't a big deal at that point since I already had a configuration to move that configuration over to the SKR 1.4. So that's what I did. Move that configuration over, pop the SKR 1.4 in here, and tested out that firmware again with, well, the same results. I was getting that same zitting on the 1.4. Now, I know tons of people are running the SKR 1.4. They're not seeing this problem. So I'm wondering, what am I doing wrong? Is there a problem with my setup in some way? So the only thing I knew to do at that point was to go test the original hardware running the AT Mega 2560, an 8-bit board, running Marlin 2.0, the same build just for that hardware. So I went in reconfigured Marlin for that board, built it, flashed it. As you can see, I even put a new display on here because that was a lot easier than using Creality's display with Marlin 2.0. And then went about doing the exact same, same test prints, particularly at the 100 millimeters per second speed. And I wanted to know, is this a hardware problem or is this a software problem? And got the same result. At 100 millimeter per second, I was seeing the same results on the stock board running Marlin 2.0 that I was seeing on the SKR board. So it's definitely at this point a software problem or at the very least a software configuration problem. So with that, I turned to the Marlin community because I was kind of out of ideas here. I had configured it to the best of my knowledge. Everything was working correctly. All the hardware was moving smoothly, but I was getting some printing artifacts. So I turned to uh, a well-known guy in the Marlin community, uh, it's Keith, better known as This Is Keith B, if you've ever seen any of his Creality or other configuration files. So I turned to him, he keeps up with things, he knows what's going on in the Marlin community. I said, what am I doing wrong here? And he took a look at my pictures and he said, are you running junction deviation? I said, yes. He said, well, there are some issues with junction deviation currently and he pointed me at a issue in the issue tracker for Marlin and sure enough it sounded very similar to what I was seeing so he suggested that I turn off junction deviation by the way if you want to know what junction deviation is I'm going to put up some information down here and I will include some links in the description to explain what this is you're probably familiar with jerk it's a setting that you can change and cure it's a setting that's part of your 3D printers motion typically. Well, in Marlin 2.0, there's a new type of motion compensation, let's call it, called junction deviation. It takes the place of jerk. So what I did was switch back to classic jerk in my Marlin firmware, and sure enough, that solved my issues. No more bubbling that I wasn't expecting. So all of that seemed to have been cleared up just by changing that setting, which was terrific. Now I could move forward. But I figure, I've already got my stock board in here. Let's do all of this testing. Marlin 2.0 on the stock board before I ever try out the 32-bit boards because I need a better base configuration than I thought I was going to. I thought that just going with the base board, Marlin 116 was going to be enough, but clearly there's some software issues I need to take into account here. So I went ahead, 
I did the test prints of the lattice cube, which also still didn't turn out great. Then I did the test of the Batman bust. And well, the 50 millimeter Batman bust is doing just fine. Well, unfortunately, the 100 millimeter per second Batman bust is really, really bad. And you'll see here in the picture, and all of these Batman busts I have here are exhibiting the exact same problem because this is how many tests I've done to try to get rid of it. And more than this, because some of them are over here in the garbage can, but it will not print these curves without a lot of blobbing, a lot of layer inconsistency. So I went and I talked to Evil Gremlin over in the Discord support channel. He helped me out. He took a look at my configuration. He let me know that you would not supposed to run S-curve acceleration with linear acceleration, that the math can kind of interfere with each other. So I went ahead, took his advice on there, and turned off S-curve acceleration in favor of linear advance. As you can see here, still not fixing the problem. Uh, but I, I kept with his advice, left one or the other on at that point. Uh, also at that point, decided that all those advanced features that you find in the configuration underscore ADV file, let's turn all of those off. Tried that, turned all of them off. Still no luck at 100 millimeters per second. Basically just went through a combination. I tried this feature on, this feature off. I tried S-curve, but not linear advance. And that's where all of these Batman busts came from was all of these tests. And I'll, I'll show you some of them here while I'm talking uh, so that you can get an idea of what I've tried. I also went back and tried some different versions. I went and tried the Marlin 2.0 bug fix branch. That didn't change anything. I went and tried an older version of Marlin. I went and tried 204.4. Again, no luck there. Uh, same sort of deal. Um, so I'm running out of ideas here. At 100 millimeters per second, without any tuning, I am not able to get Marlin 2.0. Whatever, apparently. Didn't go back, of course, there are more things that I could try, but time and material here. So far, can't get that one to print at that speed without special tuning. Whereas I have a Batman bus here. I'm going to show it to you. I don't know which one of these it is at this point. But, um, oh, here it is. And this is not, again, this is not the prettiest but it's acceptable for 100 millimeters per second. I would go, okay, there's tuning I need to do here. Maybe I should slow it down. Maybe I should change my jerk or acceleration. But compare that to these, it's not the same thing. And so I'm aware, I'm a software developer myself. I know that there is a difference between Marlin 2.0 and where we were in Marlin 1.1.6. But something has changed that is not allowing it to perform as well as Marlin 1.1.6 was at the same speed. So this means that going forward, I won't be doing any 100 millimeters per second tests on any of these 32-bit boards if I don't find a fix between now and then. I'm gonna to stick to the 50 millimeter per second test because they're close enough. And again, I'm gonna give you another caveat here because unfortunately I still have to say close enough. So these are my silent board uh, 2053, 50 millimeters per second. And while these two benchies are really, really close to the same thing, and this one off of the 2053 branch may be good enough, and I may not even notice a problem, but I have this original 116 to compare it to. And comparing the two, they're not equal. The 116 is still a better print. It is cleaner. If you look particularly at the the 2.01, it is got a waviness to it. It is not extruding smoothly. And I don't know what's causing it. I've tried every setting that I know to try. Again, this is an 8-bit board. I'm not doing anything fancy here. I've tried, again, that's where all these benchies came from. I've tried basic settings. I've tried linear advance, no linear advance. I've tried settings that were almost identical to what I was running in Marlin 116. And I'm still not having any luck. So... Again, I'm going to move forward. I think that the actual upgrade procedure, of course, is not going to change no matter which version of Marlin I end up on. You know, I, I fully expect that either someone is going to be able to tell me what I'm doing wrong, what setting is wrong. They're going to be able to tell me 
possibly which version of Marlin 2.0 I can go back to to fix this issue, or it will be fixed by someone because after seeing this video or after me filing a proper bug report through Marlin, if that's what they want me to do, that someone will be able to tell me what's happening here. So I think that's it for this video, guys. I just wanted to give you a full rundown of what I'm finding out about Marlin 2.0, at least in its current state. Uh, again, this is the end of May. I think today is May 26th when I'm recording this. Let me see, is that right? May 26th? Let's see, where is it? Of course, I'm not going to be able to find it. Oh, yeah, May 26th. Anyway, so it's May 26th when I'm recording this. Uh, this is the state as I'm finding it today. I'm still liking my Marlin 1.1 because it's still printing better. I'm hoping that you are seeing all of this. I'm going to include links in the description to all of my source. I've created one Marlin fork that I have been doing all of my configuration in. I've got three different branches that I've been maintaining because, again, I've done way more test prints than this. This was the shortened version of what I could have told you about. Take a look at that. That's all in the description. If you're a Marlin expert, if you're a Marlin maintainer and you can help me with this, I would really appreciate it. Uh, if you think I need to file a formal bug report, please let me know. But anyway, guys, this is what I found out today. I'm going to continue the upgrade path. I may even do an intermediate video on upgrading this board to Marlin 2, as well as replacing it with this terrific stock graphic LCD display because I really like them better than a touchscreen, personal opinion. But anyway, guys, I hope all of this looked uh, interesting to you. I hope you learned a little bit about Marlin 2.0. Obviously, I'm a big supporter of Marlin. I love their software. I've been using it for years now. Plan on keeping using it. I'm just hopefully adding a little bit to the discussion and we can make Marlin better together. Again, if you have any feedback, any comments, please leave that down below. Uh, if you're new here, please subscribe. I'm gonna continue down this path of looking at Marlin, particularly on the Ender 5 Plus. I may also put it on my Ender 5 once I get this all sorted out. Uh, anyway, that's it for today. And thanks for joining me right here on Curzy Fabrications. See you next time.